talk a little bit about how I met Jesus. Testimonies, I'll be talking called testimony. I'm going to give you a testimony. I had been raised in church when I was very young. Uh, it was a denominational church that is uh, renowned for essentially believing nothing. And I won't get into what church it was, but I remember going to this church pretty much being forced to. <laughs> and uh, the idea that they presented was that you would walk down the aisle, shake the preacher's hand, this church would vote whether or not you get to become a member of that particular denomination, and then you would be water baptized into that church. As a young person looking at this, I looked at the lives of the people that were there and I really didn't see much difference in them and anybody else. There wasn't any demonstration of the power of God where God was actually present doing something that could not be explained any other way other than that God was there with these people. And so uh, became very disillusioned with that, was unimpressed uh, in my mind at that time as a non-saved person. It was pretty much, you know, we've got to go again these three more times this week to hear some boring speech by some guy standing up behind this big wooden box. So as soon as I had the opportunity to make a decision on my own not to continue in that, because I really didn't see any benefit in it, uh, I decided I was not going to go, and after much uh, persuasion, force, and other such things of making me go, finally uh, my parents gave up and you know I just didn't go to church anymore. Well, you're going to find fellowship in this life with people of like mind. You just are. Whatever it is your interest is, how, whatever the things are that you're dealing with, you're going to find people who have those same interests that you can have a pseudo-fellowship, you know, with them. Well, you know, people are looking for something whatever it may be to fulfill them in this life. And so I began to search and, you know, try to find the meaning of life and why are we here and who are we and what is this whole thing all about. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I began to fellowship with some people who had like interests and we got involved in some stuff that was very much not God. And I won't get into all the details about that. But uh, I'm sure later on in this you'll get a picture of who my friends were and you know, the people I were associated with. And so uh, the day came, I'll just cut to the chase and that way I don't glorify the devil and what all the devil was doing in my life and stuff like that. The day came that I took a really close look at my life and I thought to myself, John, you are one wicked evil individual. Is there any hope for you? And as I began to think this, uh, something that someone had said at one point, which I don't even remember who the person was, who said it, when or where or anything, but someone had said something once, somewhere in my life that was gospel. And that came back to me by means of the Holy Spirit and I heard this thought in my mind, soul, however you want to word it. If you're ever in trouble and you don't know what to do, call on the name of Jesus. And I thought to myself, I'm in about as deep as you can get and there isn't any way to dig myself out of this one. I was not happy with the life that I had made for myself in my own strength and uh, it was really not good. And so I thought to myself, that's what I'll do. I'll call on the name of Jesus. But then another voice said, no, you can't do that. It, because 
you know, you've done this, 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 and this. God essentially won't have you. I won't get into all the details of what it said. And quoted me a scripture uh, out of its context, of course, to try to prove that I didn't deserve this. This wasn't for me. I couldn't earn this. I couldn't be right with God. There was nothing that I could do to make myself right with God. And I really broke down, I don't know what you would call it, uh, emotionally. And uh, it wasn't a nervous breakdown, but it was, you know, my question would be, have you ever been to a place where there is no hope whatsoever for you? Well, that was where I was at. There was no hope. Outside of Jesus Christ, there isn't any. And so, I thought to myself, well, I've got nothing to lose here. I'm going to call upon the name of Jesus. And that's what the scripture says. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, shall be saved. And so, in my very non-religious uh, way, I didn't get down on my knees or close my eyes or pray some uh, scriptural prayer or something out of the Bible. All I said was, Jesus, help me. And I meant it with all my heart. Some people do what I call, they play, let's make a deal with God. God, if you'll get me out of this, then I'll be a good person and I'll reform my ways and I'll go to church next week and they start making these deals. That's not what I did. What I meant when I said, with all of my heart, Jesus, help me, what I meant was, I'm done. I've already, you know, congratulations, I've won. I have got it my way. Now, are all the consequences of me getting it my way. I won, but what did I win? And so, when I said this and meant it with all my heart, Jesus helped me, what I meant was, from the, the core of my being, I'm done. I've already had it my way. It didn't work. This is not what I'm looking for. I want you, Jesus, and your way, whatever that may mean, whatever the cost, whatever the consequences, I'm going your direction, and I'm following you from now on. However you say it is, that's how it is. Settled. Done deal. Okay? And I totally meant that. And when this happened, I was in a room with some other people, and two other young men, and this one young man turns and looks over in the corner of the room and I'm like, what do you see over there? And he said, I see this light. And when I turned to look to see what he was seeing, this light in the, this corner of the room began to get brighter and brighter and brighter. The other young man that was with us, he was involved in witchcraft and some <laughs> really not good stuff, demonic type stuff. And he grabs his head and screams and runs out of the room. And as I begin to look, this light gets brighter and brighter and fills this room to the point that you could not see your hand that far in front of your face. Yet, it didn't hurt our eyes. There was a total peace, a total contentment that, that came. And in this light, this light was the glory of God. God's manifested presence. Or you could say it this way. God had showed up on the scene. I'm going to begin to relate to you spiritual experiences that happened at this point. And uh, I just pray right now that the Holy Spirit would speak to you and enable you to be, give you a spirit of understanding to be able to understand some of these things that I'm going to say because it does not make any sense mentally. The things of the Spirit of God are far beyond what we can know with our brain. The scripture talks about this. Paul, he had an experience, the Apostle Paul had an experience similar to what I had. A light brighter than the noonday sun appears, knocks him to the ground. He's standing there, or he's sitting there going, 
who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. Well, that's what happened to me. Jesus had appeared to Paul. That's what happened to me. Jesus came. All of a sudden, standing behind me to my right hand side, Jesus himself was standing there in a glorified body, physically. I mean, you could physically touch this body. It was not some spirit. It was not some Casper the Friendly Ghost float through the walls. Jesus, the real Jesus, the one and only, was standing right behind me. I knew this. How, how could you know this? You couldn't see anything. I didn't even have to turn to see. I knew it. I, I just tell you this. If Jesus showed up, you'd know it. And you'd know it was him too. And without being able to see anything with these physical eyes, I was able to see, nevertheless, into the realm of the Spirit. And that's what John talks about in the book of Revelation. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I turned to see this voice that behind me that spoke to me. That's what John said in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. He had a spiritual experience. He was caught up in the Spirit. That's what the Bible calls it. He was taken out of this natural realm. And he was placed over in the God realm. Now, it was not heaven as I've heard people describe heaven. I've never seen anything like that. But I was no doubt fully present with Jesus. He was fully present with me. He reached down with his left hand and put it on my right shoulder. Well, how did I know it was his left hand and how did I know it was my right shoulder? Because I couldn't see anything. I don't know. How do you explain these things? Paul said he heard words when he was, or a certain person was caught up to the third heaven. He heard words that he couldn't even utter. He couldn't even say what it was he saw over there in the realm of the spirit, where, where this was in the third heaven. I'm not saying I was in the third heaven. I'm just trying to relate to you in words what it was I experienced. Jesus reached down with his left hand and put it on my right shoulder. When he did, I felt it, a real physical hand, just like my physical hand is put on my shoulder. When this happened, I felt everything that was inside Jesus flow out of him into me. The Bible calls it the virtue, the power, the, the Holy Spirit. You can word it a thousand different ways. But I'm telling you the actual, real, practical experience of how I received Christ. Everything that was in him came into me. See, we... we it's like, oh, this guy's crazy. He's saying somehow now that everything that's in Jesus is in him. Hey, isn't this what you say? Isn't you church people, isn't this what you say? Jesus is in my heart. Oh, really? Well, what does that mean? I've received Jesus. Oh, you did? What, did you receive part of him? Did you, what, how did you receive Jesus? I'm telling you, Jesus came on the inside of me. Everything about him came in, into me. He came into me. And when he laid his hand on me, several things began to happen that I began to experience. The first thing was that I remember was his love for me. I recognized that even in all of my totally messed up state, that he wanted me, he desired me, he longed to be with me. And I began to recognize that as he touched me. And I actually at first I just I, I almost recoiled to get away like, but but Jesus, you know, you you know what I did, you know. But I recognize, yes, he does know what I did. As a matter of fact, he's all known. Yet, he wanted me. He pursued me. He was waiting for me to open up to him, to receive him. And then when that happened, a peace came. I mean, a peace 
where I knew that he didn't have anything against me. He was for me. He wants me. And I knew that God, the Father, had absolutely nothing against me. Jesus had brought me in union with God. God accepted me totally because of what Jesus had done. Because I had received Christ. That's how. And so, you talk about mercy. Even though he knew everything about me, he wanted me, he loved me, he pursued me, he received me to himself. He came in union with me. You talk about mercy. You talk about goodness. And then the next thing that I remember was this, this peace came because I knew I was in right standing with God. He was holding nothing against me. I'm okay. Hey, I'm okay with God. That's what righteousness is. That's what right standing with God is. And that produces peace. Real peace. And knowing that there's nothing he's holding against me. No hostility. Then, joy came. I realized for the first time in my life that people are looking to persons, places, things, whatever, to try to find some sense of fulfillment. And i just give you the scenario, the rundown on this. Oh, when I, you know, come into this relationship with this certain person, then everything's just going to be great. It'll be just what I've always been looking for my whole life. Or, when I get in this certain thing that I've always wanted, then somehow that's going to fulfill me and I'll just be, I'll be great. Everything will be good. Or, when I have this certain experience, you know, when I go skydiving or scuba diving or when I get this certain thing or, or when I, whatever it may be, people are always looking for and grasping off into the future with some hope that someday something's going to come along and fulfill them and scratch the itch on the inside of them and they'll just really be good from then on out. I realized this joy caused me to realize everything that every person has ever been searching for, for fulfillment, is really Jesus himself that they're searching for. He's the only one that can bring that fulfillment. Coming into right standing with the creator that created you is the only way you can be totally fulfilled. That is when life, real life, begins. Is in this relationship with Christ. And so, at this point, I had another experience. And I wanted to say this. This was not a vision. Jesus literally, physically was standing there. Jesus literally, physically put his hand on my shoulder. And I literally received Jesus. He came in me. And then, we use these terms as Christians, we're in Christ. In Christ. What in the world does that mean? Well, I literally experience being in Christ. At this point, I began to have a vision. After this experience that I explained to you. And I was taken out in the realm of the Spirit. And it was as if. This is the only way I can explain it. It was as if I was inside of Jesus' body. In his physical body, in his mind, hearing his thoughts. The Bible talks about that. We have the mind of Christ, not we're going to get it, not we're going to work our way to try to somehow perform to earn it. No, we. if you're in Jesus, you've got his mind. And so, I experienced this thing where I was caught up into Jesus in the realm of the Spirit. I was literally in Him and was looking out of His eyes and hearing His thoughts. At this point, I was not even aware that there was a John. I was so summed up in Him 
that I was not aware there was a me. And, and I saw this vision, the vision of God, or you could say the way Jesus sees things, because I'm looking out of his eyes, seeing what he sees, hearing his thoughts in his mind of what he knows. And it was as if he turned his head to the left-hand side and I saw eternity of eternities past. Every event, every person, every thought they ever thought, everything they ever did, everything. From eternity of eternities past up until that very moment that I was sitting there. And in that, I saw myself. I saw my entire life. I'm going to try to relate to you something spiritual that's going to go kind of sideways with your brain. So just receive of the Lord. That's the only way you can get this. I saw my entire life all at once. The reason is God is outside of time. He's in eternity. He doesn't have to wait for one event to happen and then another event and then another event to know what's going to happen. I saw my entire life as he saw me all at one time and I thought, I, I thought, there's me. And I heard him in his mind say, these are all the times I've protected you and these are all the times I've provided for you when you didn't know me and when you didn't want to know me. And then he turned, as it were, his head to the right hand side and I saw out of his eyes, eternity of eternity's future. Every event, every person, ever thought they'd ever think, everything that would ever happen, saw every bit of it all at one time. From his vantage point, looking out of his eyes, hearing his thoughts in his mind. And he said, I'm showing you some things that will come to pass. I'm showing you other things that may come to pass. Now, I know that that doesn't make any sense in your brain. Well, how could it be that it is going to come to pass, but then something may come to pass when you saw everything that would ever come to pass? And I realized that uh, God has given people the ability to choose. Of course, he's wanting us to choose things according to his plan. You know, your will be done, your kingdom come, Father, and all of this. But uh, depending upon whether we cooperate with him and walk together with him, follow him, allow him to lead us, uh, or not, it will depend upon the outcome of eternity. Your life in this earth is so important that it will affect eternity of eternities. The stuff that you're involved in right now whether you're following Jesus and going the direction that God would have you go or not, it's up to you, is affecting eternity. And so, uh, I, I saw this, well, John, can you tell us what's going to happen or what did happen or, or whatever? That was his mind. That wasn't John's brain. Do you think, like, like Paul said, it, impossible to speak these words. You know, you can't even put into words or grasp with your human brain the entirety of eternity of eternities. But I saw it nevertheless, looking through his eyes in the vision of God. And so, you know, what about this event? And, you know, who's the Antichrist? And what's going to happen in the end of the world? And who's going to be in heaven? And I'll, I'll, it's a waste of time even trying to talk about that. A human brain cannot grasp the fullness of all those things. But nevertheless, he allowed me by his grace to be able to see these things. And so, uh, trying to be relating these issues in human words, it's like Paul said, unlawful for a man to even speak that. You couldn't even form that into a... I mean, how are you going to talk about something that takes an eternity to fulfill? It'd take an eternity for me to tell you. And then so. And so anyway, this experience lasted for somewhere between 20 to 45 minutes. I'd say probably about 30 minutes, something like that. And I was gone. I was gone out of my physical body. Paul talked about that. He said uh, he knew this person 
uh, 13 years previously who was caught up to the third heaven when the, whether in the body or out of the body he didn't know only God knows well I knew for sure I was not in my physical body because I came back to my physical body and I came back into my physical body just like you put your hand in a glove or your foot in a boot at that point I realized that the real me you say it this way, I realized who I was. I realized the real me wasn't this outward shell that you're looking at and hearing the voice of on this video. The real you, if you are in Christ or born again in union with God, however you want to say it, is the new creation. The new you that he made you that is already conformed to the image of Christ. Already spiritual already holy, already sanctified, already all these things, already perfect or perfected or however you want to say it, that need to be fixed up. The real you, what the Bible calls the hidden man of the heart, that me had been gone for approximately 30 minutes and I came back into this physical body and realized for the first time God has put us, who we really are, in this shell, this earth suit, to contact the earth and the physical realm. That the real me was the me inside that's looking out of these eyes, speaking to you right now. And so, at the, the end of this experience, when I came back to myself, now I'm back in my brain. Not, <laughs> and I... I was thinking to myself, wow, and this guy who's sitting across from me who had been there the whole time this experience was going on, he was having his own personal experience with the Lord. Uh, I looked at him and by this time the glory of God that was in the room, this uh, light had dissipated to the form that it looked like a bright cloud and I could see through it to some extent, and I saw the young man who'd been sitting across from me this whole time that I had been gone in the realm of the Spirit for 30 some odd minutes probably, and I said, wow, did you see that? And what answered back was Jesus speaking out of this young man's mouth, and he said, yes son, I have seen it, and I am still here. And at that point, you know, I've said this many times to people who hear me talk about this experience of how I received the Lord. And I say, you know, if Jesus was sitting right here, right in front of you, you'd have about a million questions you'd want to ask him. And so now that I'm in my own mind and in my physical body, I begin to ask the Lord questions. You know, what, what about this, and how does this work out, and yada, 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 and then have, I won't get into the details of that, but, you know, I'll tell you what you'd ask him. I can tell you for absolutely certain the questions you would ask him. It would be everything that you're fearful of, and worried about, wondering about, and, uh, those are the things that I began to ask, oh, Lord, what about this, and what about that, and, every time before I could form the words in my mind even to speak it out of my mouth he answered me the scripture says before you call on me I'll answer and while you're yet speaking I'll say here I am and he already knows what is in your heart the real you that operates a whole lot faster than your physical brain in the time that it takes to form a thought in a picture and put into words to say it out of your mouth. So as soon as something would rise up in my heart that I would begin to form a question to ask him about, he would already answer me in my heart before I could even ask the question. That's, that's how spirit works. That's how you're you, that's how your heart, I'm not talking about your blood pump, that's how your heart works, the heart of man. That's in union with Christ, that is of those who are born again. Okay? And so, anyway, uh, he spoke to me, the answer of all these things just 
boom, 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 as soon as the thought of my heart would come, before the thought of my head could catch up to form it into words to say, he answered me and settled all these issues, brought peace in my heart. That's what the scripture says. It says, be anxious or trouble for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And so I experienced this, literally. And uh, so the entire experience probably lasted two hours to the point that, you know, I ended up just, it would be me and just the young man speaking, him, not the Lord speaking through him, but just, you know, we're back to ourselves or however you want to say it, just holding a conversation and the glory of God had dissipated until there was no uh, visible manifested presence or anything like that. So that was my experience of how I met Jesus.